A recent angry email from a reader said that certain issues should not be determined by the dictates of the market. With a mere turn of a phrase, he had turned reality upside down. Decisions by people free to make their mutual accommodations with other free people were called dictates, while having third parties tell all of them what they could and couldn't do was not. Verbal coups have long been a specialty of the left. Totalitarian countries on the left have called themselves people's democracies and used the egalitarian greeting comrade, even though some comrades have the arbitrary power of life and death over other comrades. In democratic countries, where public opinion matters, the left has used its verbal talents to change the whole meaning of words and to substitute new words so that issues would be debated in terms of their redefined vocabulary instead of the real substance of the issues. Words which have acquired connotations from the actual experiences of millions of human beings over generations or even centuries have been replaced by new words that wipe out those connotations and substitute more fashionable notions of the left. The word swamp, for example, has been all but erased from the language. Swamps were messy, sometimes smelly places where mosquitoes bred and sometimes snakes lurked. The left has replaced the word swamp with wetlands, a word spoken in pious tones, usually reserved for sacred things. The point of this verbal sleight of hand is to impose the left's notions of how other people can use their own land. Restrictive laws about wetlands have imposed huge costs on farmers and other owners of land that happen to have a certain amount of water on it. Another word that the left has virtually banished from the language is bum. Centuries of experience with idlers who refused to work and who hung around on the streets making a nuisance and sometimes a menace of themselves were erased from our memories as the left verbally transformed those same people into a sacred icon, the homeless. As with swamps, what was once messy and smelly was now turned into something we had a duty to protect. It was now our duty to support people who refused to support themselves. Crimes committed by bums are covered up by the media by verbally transforming the homeless into transients or drifters whenever they commit crimes. Thus, the homeless are the only group you never hear of committing any crimes. More to the point, third parties' notions are imposed by the power of the government to raise our taxes to support people who are raising hell on our streets and in parks where it has often become too dangerous for our children to play. The left has a whole vocabulary devoted to depicting people who do not meet standards as people who have been denied access. Whether it is academic standards, job qualifications, or credit requirements, those who do not measure up are said to have been deprived of opportunity, rights, or social justice. The word games of the left, from the mantra of diversity to the pieties of compassion, are not just games. They are ways of imposing power by evading issues of substance through the use of seductive rhetoric. Rights, for example, have become an all-purpose term used for evading both facts and logic by saying that people have a right to whatever the left wants to give them by taking from others. For centuries, rights were exemptions from government power, as in the Bill of Rights. Now, the left has redefined rights as things that can be demanded from the taxpayers or from private employers or others on behalf of people who accept no mutual obligations, even for common decency. At one time, educators tried to teach students to carefully define words and systematically analyze arguments. They said, we are here to teach you how to think, not what to think. Today, they are teaching students what to think political correctness. Instead of knowledge, students are given self-esteem so that they can vent their ignorance with confidence.